Right now you might be a bit confused about what the public, private, static and all of that stuff means. You usually use it when you are creating a variable, void or a class. So I will teach you everything you need to know about the accessibility of the variables and voids that you need to know. Usually what you see most often is when you type public and then you can type for example bool and give name to the variable, so this can be bool1 or you can type private bool bool2. So what is the difference? It is actually pretty easy. The public can be accessed in this entire class but also it can be accessed in other classes but the bool2 which is private can be accessed only in the scope where you have defined it. So because I have defined the bool in this class and it is private, then I could create some void. And in the void, because I have defined the private bool in this class, I can access it here. So bool2, I can set it to true for example, and obviously the same thing I can do it with the public, because the public can be accessed in this whole class and also in other classes. But when I define the private bool in the update, here you actually don't want to write the private. When you have it like this, that I have the bool and it is named bool2, it is private but only for the void update. So now when I want to access the bool2 somewhere else, for example in the start, I can't do that. I can only access the bool1. Or if I would create private bool, which would be private for this whole class, you can see that I can access it in all of the voids and functions which are under the private. Also one of the main differences between the public and private is that you can't see the private in the inspector. So when I have just added the script one to some object, you can see that I can set the bool1, but I don't see the bool2 because it is private. Right now I will tell you that it is a lot better to use private more often. Why? Because when you have everything public in this script and you want to access something from the script from the other script, then you might accidentally change some variables or voids that you don't want to change. So always, when you can keep it private, keep it private. But when you want to see it in the inspector, you might want to set it to public because what is the other way that you can see it in the inspector? Well, before you define the variable, into the square brackets, you can just type serialize field. And now when we take a look in the inspector, yeah, we can see the bool2 in the inspector2, even though it is still private. What you might sometimes see is that you have just serialize field and then the bool. This is the same as if it would be private. So what we can do is just type, for example, integer number one and keep it like that even though there is not written public or private, it is automatically private. The same thing might sometimes happen with the public bool that you don't want to see it in the inspector. For this again, you can just into the square brackets, type height in the inspector and obviously you will not be able to see it. Now I will show you how the access modifiers work in action. You can see that I have the public bool, private bool, then I have added public void, private void, and also void that you can just see that you don't need to write the private here and you can see that because in the same scope I have defined two voids with the same name it is giving us error so you can't just do that and when I go into the second script we can try to access all the volumes but here when I want to access the bool1 which is public I can't just say that bool1 equals something you can see that it doesn't give us even option to do that. We first need to make a reference for the class in which we have the variable, which is script1. So here I can just type script1, name it, let's say, script. And because I want to assign the value to it, I am going to do the serialize field, so I can see it in the inspector. And now when I type script, which is a reference for the script1 class, I can just type dot and then I can access the bool1 and set its value to true. You can see that I can't access the bool2, it is just not here, and I can obviously access the public void, but not the private void. 
yeah, we have the public void here, but when I type the private, yeah, you can't see it here. Also, sometimes when you have the public variable, you might just want to be able to get the value from it, but not set it, because again, you might just accidentally set the wrong value. We can do this using the attributes. So, into the furry brackets, you can just type get and set, like this. Obviously, now it is public get and public set. So when I want to be able to set the bool in the other scripts, but not get it, or the other way around, I can just type the public get and then private set. Now, because this is private set, here in this class, I can say bool1 equals true, but when I go into the other script, and I say script that bool1 equals yeah, you can see that it gives us an error because it is the private set and we can only set it in this class. The last thing that I will mention about the public and private is that make sure that you always use private if you can and if you have something public, it is also worth using the private set. Next thing that I will tell you about is the static. So we can use it with the public, we can type public static bool and what this does is that the variable belongs to the class script1 and not just to some specific instance of the class. So if I have the public static bool1, I can go to the script2 and I don't even need to reference the script1. I can just say script1 because it is the static, it is just tied to the class. That and then I can set the bool, which you can see is static and now it is in the whole class, just the static bool. This is usually used for singletons, about which I have a video on my channel. So what it does is that you can create some kind of game manager script. And then when you want to get some value from the game manager script, you can just type the, let's say right now it is the script one, that, and then just get the value or trigger the void without even needing to actually find the game object on which you have the class. I also sometimes use it for some important variables that I create a class that is called just SV, which stands for scene variables, and into which I just define all of the public static, let's say int, which can be for the player score, and then I can really easily access it in the other scripts. But again, I really don't recommend this. You shouldn't be using it too much because it is heavier on the performance. It is tied just to the class itself and not to the instance of the class. So you might just accidentally change some stuff and it is usually better to keep as much stuff private than if you need something you can make it public and if it is really important you need to access it in a lot of scripts then you can make it static that way you can really easily access it. You can obviously use the static also with voids so I can say public static or you can make static class and so on. This can be used for the utility functions and a lot of stuff but this is for another video. I hope that you now better understand the public, private, static and all of that stuff that we have been talking about. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!